अतिरिक्त सामान मोमबत्तियां माचिस और कैरोसिन सभी महत्वपूर्ण दस्तावेजों को एक जल रोधक थैले में रखें पशुओं की रस्सियां खोलें सुरक्षित ऊंचा स्थान या सेफ शेल्टर निर्धारित करके रखें तैयारी में ही समझदारी भारत की पोलियो से जीत की कहानी बड़े बड़े शब्दों में लिखी जाएगी पर इस जीती हुई लड़ाई को कायम रखने के लिए हमें अपने प्रयासों को जारी रखना होगा जब तक दुनिया से पोलियो का खतरा पूर्ण रूप से टल न जाए खतरा है बरकरार इसीलिए पोलियो की खुराक पिलाना है हर बार दो बूंद हर बार पोलियो पर जीत रहे बरकरार You're watching uh, Doctors Charter special series on uh, COVID-19. I'm Sakal Bhatt, and today we're going to talk about why is it so important uh, the saturation of uh, population with vaccines that being the key factor, and the dire need to actually completely do away with the vaccine hesitancy. Whether we are talking about the adult population or pediatric population, remember this is important because the clinical trials for children have already. The young children have already got to go ahead, and the larger picture when it comes to solid, sustainable COVID templates. That's going to be our talking point tonight on this edition of Doctors Chat. We're very happy to have uh, joining us all the way from Mumbai, Dr. Shashank Joshi. He's a renowned endocrinologist and also, most importantly, the member of the Maharashtra COVID-19 Task Force. Thank you so much, uh, and Namaskar, and thank you so much, Dr. Joshi, to uh, uh, to join us and taking our time for us. And I'm, I'm going to quickly start with the Mumbai scenario, the Maharashtra scenario. Uh, very quickly, uh, earlier I, I was reading uh, some of your interviews. Obviously, you've been very vociferously open about the lapses and the mistakes. and what should be done and what should not be done but to begin with what will you attribute to the kind of rebound that maharashtra saw in terms of coming back to life uh, considering maharashtra was at the receiving end of the worst of covid one of the states worst affected states so sakal ji thank you so much for having me over pleasure I is absolutely us. right that we were both in the first wave and the second wave we were uh, very much in the woods and uh, in the first wave we we struggled let me be very honest but in the second wave the ferocity of the second wave was very fast and it was a very fast spreading virus uh, though it was faster recovering and uh, the healthcare system was simply overwhelmed mm. but possibly and probably we were little better prepared in terms of health preparedness particularly places like mumbai which has a very high population density uh, you know across india if you see it's a very crowded place and when you are handling covid which is now we know an airborne uh, virus mm. it was not easy to handle it and therefore we had to decentralize it and it was i think the decentralization in you know 24 mumbais of each ward which made all the difference and that really made uh, you know the 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 difference between uh, the the way we handled the second wave better than the first wave okay. so we definitely were on the back foot mm -hmm. but i think our health preparedness was much better we had the jumbo facilities which served as a buffer and i think ultimately in the long run we were able to give every see 80% of people were asymptomatic and can be managed at home but mm. it is for those 20% that we needed enough hospital beds quarantine beds hospital or healthcare infrastructure to take care of them and we mm. had it this time and which is why we didn't get into any acute shortages because i think our our planning strategy and execution was a little better Mm -hmm. in early april we did struggle but clearly we see that the wave is on the way and we definitely are much better off than what we were before okay uh, looking forward uh, there's so much of buzz about uh, that uh, what is going to happen in october november we are conveniently using we as in media and otherwise also this third wave uh, we want to just understand from you sir uh, 
can we ensure and actually ensure a complete mitigation mitigation of third wave or if i may put it this way resurgence of cases that is anticipated in the month of october november as per the pattern the scientific arithmetic or the pattern that this virus follows can we just completely do away with it can we be prepared so sakal ji uh, one thing is covid virus and human behavior both are predictably unpredictable so all mathematical models have failed but within that whatever mathematical models have been modeled abroad and within india they have been reasonable in their some estimates mm. and the guess estimate or guess mm. estimate is probably that somewhere in september to december any time a third wave could potentially come correct so there are three things to mitigate it and when you ease out curves mm. the first yardstick is that a test positivity rate so if you take 100 people Mm. at least if you test all the 100 people less than 5 people should test positive for more than two weeks mm. i think that is there across india the second thing is 70% of the geography should be vaccinated or exposed to the virus that if we are able to do as our honorable prime minister has assured one crore vaccines per day mm. in the next 3 months we will be able to mitigate the sting out of the third wave completely so are you saying as a medical and practitioner and expert that the saturation of the maximum population uh, 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 with vaccines is going to be a key factor and that should be the prime focus of course it will be one of the key factors okay and the third factor is that we need zero tolerance for non adherence to covid appropriate protocols and covid appropriate behavior. how do we ensure that so that is a it is the virus is as much in the mind as much as it is in the body hmm. let me be yeah. devil's advocate here so even the minute we relax you're saying it's going to rebound but then what could be a sustainable solution because all and many like you experts medical experts you know they contend the fact that you know this is going to take some time the virus is around and the virus will stay for some time but what about the solutions that are sustainable so sustainable solution is self discipline in the mind and vaccination these two are clear cut solution so we will have to mask ourselves for some duration at least for this year till the end of this year because whether you have a variant of concern or not whether you are vaccinated or not vaccinated we will need some degree of self discipline self control and self regulation and i think you know this is something where indians tend to be argumentative and rebellious and we need to control our habits we also tend to be lazy at times but we are a resilient new india and i think the india 2.0 which we see now is has it within itself and each one of us have it within ourselves to control just that little bit for these 6 months to get over the crisis if you ask me by april 2022 we will be totally out of covid in a big way the virus may stay the variant may stay but the life will not be impacted the way it has been impacted in the first or second wave because so by that saying, time by that the, time the reasonable part of the population will be vaccinated dr we joshi that's a very uh, th- that's a point that you've made you know by april 2022 you're saying that the virus will stay but it won't be life threatening and that's the target absolutely absolutely and that's a very reasonable estimate i'm making we can achieve it much earlier also provided we don't have a variant of concern and provided we are able to vaccinate our population and provided our population cooperates with us in terms of its behavior and i think it's all the three are feasible see the behavior of the virus we can't control but we can vaccinate to make good antibodies the behavior of human beings which is all of us we can definitely make some impact and i think that is very doable see it's a airborne droplet virus we have been able to control polio we have been able to control smallpox we have been able to control tuberculosis why can't we control covid and covid is a very tricky virus so you know whether you like it or not it's going to travel in the air so if you don't mask it's going to enter so we need to be very careful for example many people have people coming at home you know and suppose you need to understand what is the true principle of masking people have maids coming at home people have servants coming at home and then they go to multiple houses when they are at home what's the harm in masking for 2 or 3 hours and protecting ourselves when you are going out what's wrong in masking ourselves because we are trying to save ourselves our own family members our own near and dear ones the second wave has impacted all of us sakal ji it has impacted every family or every friend or our neighborhood there is no person in living in india or living not on not touched by it totally we have all been touched by it so i think it's a lesson if we don't learn from the lessons of second wave i think we'll be foolhardy 
and we cannot afford that complacency and foolhardiness. We definitely, I think, it's a resilient India. As I told you, it's a new India, and I think we can we can do it. But I think it's in the mind, and if our mind becomes rebellious and think that COVID is over and we are back to square one, we will be doomed. And so, I think that's something which we need to recognize. Uh, Doctor Joshi, uh, so you you're saying that this is a long drawn COVID war. Absolutely. There are many battles. We had a first battle. We had a second battle. First wave, second wave. We may have a third battle, but probably we'll be able to mitigate it. Okay. You've also talked a lot about uh, the rationalization of the use of oxygen, ramping up healthcare infrastructure. Uh, how Maharashtra actually went up in terms of testing this time around. So that is a parallel work in progress. I mean, something that you would want. Uh, that other states can replicate from Maharashtra model. When I say other states, I, I, I mean the states that have seen massive spike in the cases of it. Well, absolutely. I think, you know, we all have to be self-reliant or Atma Nirbhar, as our Prime Minister has said. And I think it's important to take some cues from Mumbai or Maharashtra that you need to be self-sufficient on oxygen. We need to ration and rationalize oxygen. See, the point so is... What do you mean rationalizing oxygen? The point is many people who needed two liters of oxygen when they are on the recovery path, we could tap atmospheric at, at oxygen and not use the liquid oxygen which is used. So there are ways and means to do oxygen audit. So we had in Maharashtra very tight oxygen audit so that the most deserving, most needy gets what the person needs. And there's also a confidence in people at large that they will get oxygen when they need. But is an oxygen audit a very tricky space? It's a, not a tricky space. I think... You know, if we do not, a lot of wastage also can occur. Same thing. How we do we ensure the leakages don't happen? So, so we have to ensure that we have to have systems in place. And our healthcare infrastructure was caught napping because of the ferocity of the second wave. But I think now it has become reasonably wise and uh, stronger with systems in place, audits in place and checks in place. And now that the checks and balances in place, I think for third wave, they are much better prepared in terms of that. In terms of also the way we are handling the disease of assessing every patient, see our now current objectives are twofold. Sakal, hmm. first is to save every life. We do not want a single death due to COVID. We want to go to a zero COVID death rate. Second is we want to mitigate people with severe disease in the hospital or critical illnesses. Hmm. These are our two objectives. That's the objective of vaccine also. See, these are early generation vaccines. So even after vaccines, you may sometimes get a very asymptomatic or mild infection. Mm. But we don't want that person who has got vaccine breakthrough infection to ever go to a hospital or go to an ICU or have a death. So that is our objective. Our first objective is to save every life. And what happened often in the first wave and also in the second wave is people don't understand COVID timetable is two to three weeks. And if they are asymptomatic in the first week, they don't monitor their saturation. And it's in the second week when they get that happy hypoxia, suddenly their saturation drops, they get breathless, then they rush to the hospital and often they, they, they die because of lack of access to care. And that is what we can mitigate and prevent. This is in our hands. And therefore, we need, and I'm grateful to all channels, including Durdarshan, which has persisted to educate people at large that do not take COVID lightly. Even if you have asymptomatic disease, COVID is going to be there the virus will multiply for 10 days. Virus needs monitoring for 14 to 21 days. You need to be medically connected twice a day, digitally or telephonically with your medical professional or healthcare provider so that we can ensure that every life is safe. And it is for that medical or healthcare provider to recognize the red flag and decide whether the person needs to be in the institution or can be managed at home and save every life. Every life matters, if you ask me. And then the second step is to ensure that we do not get them into severe disease or critical disease. And for that, you need very robust systems in place, critical care systems in place. To a great extent, we have built them. Now. Of course, we are not fully ready because we know that if the third wave happens, for example, in children, in India, we have only 2000 ICU beds for children. Hmm. Now it, it, it's not likely children actually are very robust. We don't think it will happen in children. But God forbid, this is the only population which is not exposed to the vaccination. Because, you know, by the time the children vaccine trials will be over, six months will be over. And we don't have sufficient vaccines to vaccinate the children population. First 10 years of a child's life, child has thymus. So they are able to clear the virus. They have a lot of H2 receptors. 
so they will get the disease but most of the children will recover completely but maybe 0.1 to 0.5 percent of children may get that rare multi-system infection but in our population of india which is so large in the pediatric space they get it we need infrastructure ready for that and i am happy that both the state and central governments have made readiness for child or children with covid also for the third wave so now we are much wiser than what we were between the first and the second wave Pediatric population, children, their vaccination, uh, Dr. Joshi, uh, clinical trials for children have already got a go ahead. Uh, there is a sense of uh, anxiety amongst parents and naturally so, because uh, we're talking about children being uh, susceptible, like, probability, probability of it, uh, when uh, or if at all there is a resurgence. I want to ask you now, uh, what are the kind of uh, observations as, as a medical practitioner, you know, for, for, for the viewers of Dudashi, just to understand these trials, uh, vaccine trials with children, uh, are the results promising? Because let's face it, there is a certain part of the country, certain states, certain pockets, rural mostly, that there is, there is this vaccine hesitancy. And we can't afford that. Sakal, you're absolutely right. And I think, uh, let us look at children. First things I want to assure all parents that there is nothing to worry. Even God forbid, if a child gets COVID, the child's going to be okay. 90% of the child, the child is going to be fine, would be managed by a very, very good child care specialist at home itself. And there are protocols in place. They have been sensitized as a community or even the general practitioner. In fact, in states like Maharashtra, we have even gone to sensitize the ASHA workers and the, the, the first line providers who are the Asha workers or the various other Anganwadi workers, as you call them. Mm. So they can be handled very easily. Second thing, you write a very right question that the children's trials for vaccines are happening. Now, first thing is, I would like to tell all parents that normal vaccination for children got disrupted last year because of the first wave and this year because of the second wave. Ensure that that is completed first. Ensure that the child gets the flu shot, child gets all the re vaccines recommended by the Universal Immunization Program and don't let that to be disrupted. Mm. Third thing is vaccines save lives and vaccines clearly are the, the game changers. So don't fear vaccine, whichever vaccine you get, whether you are in a village or whether you're in a city, what vaccine will do is will make you protect you from actually severe disease and death. That is the whole idea of vaccination. So don't be hesitant to take the vaccine. Minute you're eligible, go and take it. Vaccine side effects are extraordinarily rare and vaccine always saves lives and also eventually will help us eliminate the COVID in the long run. Post-COVID uh, syndrome or uh, complications, uh, MISCI, multiple uh, multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children. Multi-system inflammatory, uh, inflammatory syndrome in children, and uh, especially when we look at the age bracket of 2 to 18, and there have been severe cases reported in this space. We're getting a lot of queries in this space uh, from parents across the country. Uh, the uh, the understanding, the sense that we get is that the cure to this is also very expensive, the drugs th that are administered. Uh, especially since we're talking about pediatric population children could you just give us more clarity how do we deal with it how do we deal with this multi-covid syndrome uh, or complication especially with children absolutely very rarely if you get this complication okay this complication also is very treatable hmm. all you need to do is get the child in the intensive care unit manage the fluid electrolytes and give a simple drug called iv immunoglobulin like these are simple antibody like immunoglobulins, which are available across India and their production also has been ramped up now in the preparedness of the third wave and give it and 95% of children or 99% of children will recover from it. So even in this rarest of rare possibility of the MISC happening in children, which also occurred this time, there were hardly any deaths in children. See, remember, children are more resilient. Children and women have special protection from COVID. Okay, woman because of estrogen and woman biologically is a superior sex, which we all know. And secondly, and from an endocrine standpoint, and secondly, children because they have the thymus gland. So below 10 years, they are specially protected from the immunological standpoint. Children are able to handle and clear viruses also better. So they could be spreaders, but God forbid if they get that rare complication, it's all about simple supportive intensive care in a pediatric care unit 
under medical supervision, handling their fluid electrolytes, giving them some IV immunoglobulin, and they'll be good. So remember that it's much easier to handle the pediatric critical COVID compared to an adult COVID with cytokine storm or the lung storm or the heart storm which we get. So it's much easier to handle children compared to the adults. You, you know, you're saying it's easier to handle children, but then it's also critical to handle children, a certain kind of... It's absolutely, you are right, because we have to not only handle children, but we have to handle the anxieties of the parents. Yes. And we have to have infrastructure if yes. a child, God forbid... You have preempted my next question. This is exactly what my next... There, yeah. is, there is a critical case. We need infrastructure to be in readiness. For example, in Maharashtra and across India now, including the government of India, everybody is now focusing to ensure that God forbid, though we know that wave may not happen, and it will only be 3%. It will again be, this time we are suspecting that the vulnerable group in the third wave is likely to be people between 20 and 40, and it is likely to be in a socioeconomic group which is less exposed to the virus. So people who did not get the first wave and the second wave and did not get vaccinated, that less exposed population is likely to get it. Still, still we need to have ramping up of pediatric intensive care beds. And that's been done across. Maharashtra is not lagging behind at all, nor is various other states, including government of India, ensuring that no child should have any access issue to a critical bed if they need it. God forbid. Hmm. Uh, now, the same thing, post-COVID syndrome or complication in adults. So, uh, post-COVID yeah. syndrome in adults has become a big problem. Yes. Atalji, particularly with this Delta or Delta Plus variant, it has left the lung, the heart and the sugar very badly damaged. And it has also left with a, a little bit of a mini epidemic of mucor, which we all know. So the first thing is many people who suffered this time with COVID were left with prolonged lung complications where they are out of breath, they need oxygen for a little longer time, they need special medications like perpenidone or nantabib or sometimes even inhaled steroids. So that's one thing. And, and, and mammoth weight lung loss. Support. Weight loss. So, so lung support. Then second thing is they often need heart support and supervision with cardiac care. You are right. They have, may have weight loss. They may need very good nutrition, including protein supplements. They need to do yoga to improve their lung function better. They need chest physiotherapists to work on them very regularly. And also remember, it is like an earthquake or like a war. So they go through this mental post-traumatic stress disorder. They feel fatigued all the time. And the other tsunami which we are seeing is a syndemic, COVID with diabetes. You know, after COVID, a lot of people who are pre-diabetic became diabetic. Or we got COVID-related diabetes. Okay. And then the sugars are very high. And we are seeing that also as a pandemic now. And that's something which are there. And when we have a deadly combination of steroid with diabetes, often people who didn't keep their nose, throat or mouth clean. Remember, just like I told you, COVID timetable is for two to three weeks, mm. post-COVID timetable is 100 days or three months. So for three months, people should have good nutrition, adequate nutrition, monitor their lung, monitor their heart, do some pranayama, do a focus on nutrition and ensure that they keep connected with their doctor, whether it's a lung specialist or a heart specialist or a sugar specialist, or sometimes very rarely if they get a, a ENT related issue, like mucor mycosis, very rarely we have seen this also in this time. But mucor more or less has now disappeared from the country. But we, we know that this could happen. So it's mm. important that even after COVID, after two to three weeks of COVID, you need to take care of your health for the next three to four months. And that's something which we recognize. And then get vaccinated. Uh, showing good antibody response i'm again going back to this uh, you know covid vaccine trials for children you know that question if you just a bit of more clarif uh, not clarification elaboration on uh, the trials uh, what is being observed so far so uh, we have what are, how how are the results so the trials done abroad have shown us data that children's vaccines work well in India, there are two trials which are ongoing. One is a vaccine, which is a home-made vaccine, ICMR, Bharat Biotech vaccine, which is co-vaccine, mm -hmm. where the trial has just started between 2 to 18 years. That yes. trial data is not in public domain, but trials have commenced across India, different geographies of India. Second is a vaccine which will be available soon from Zydus Cadilla, which is from Ahmedabad. They have a DNA vaccine, which is called Zycovid. They have already finished their phase three trials in more than 2,000 children 
between the ages 12 and 18. We have two groups of vaccines which are now being investigated for the pediatric population. And in the world, the Pfizer has got a mRNA and Moderna, which is also an mRNA vaccine, who have done pediatric trials. Okay. Whatever data we know from the North America or Europe, we know the pediatric trials have been successful and the vaccine is immunogenic and is safe for children. So the global data is supportive. I am reasonably certain that in the next two to three months, we'll have data on immunogenicity and safety in the Indian children as well. And once that data is in public domain, our subject expert committee of the drug controller will look at the data and then decide whether emergency authorization can be given for this population. Hmm. Okay, Dr. Joshi, I would want to ask you one last question. You've uh, said, you earlier mentioned that healthcare system had been complacent about the double mutant strain. Uh, we need to be prepared. We are preparing in a lot of spaces uh, since uh, that, that point on uh, vaccine hesitancy. Vaccine hesitancy is something that we need to fight. We, how, how do we go about it? Your final message, your final message as a doctor uh, to the viewers of National Channel. We, we keep getting such uh, reports from, from nook and corners of the country, uh, misinformation, rumors about uh, not uh, going out and you know getting these vaccines administered. Uh, we can't afford that right now, isn't it? Absolutely. I think vaccines have to be embraced. The minute you're eligible, take the vaccine. Don't hesitate. Ki se side effect hoga, ki se kuch hoga. Vaccine lena chahiye sabo. So Tika current, yeah, if you have to get out of COVID, there are only two vaccines. One is get your injection on time when you're eligible and get your second dose on time without fear of any adverse effect. Once your doctor clears you. And second is ensure that for this year, and maybe till April of next year, double mask yourself, stay a little distance and be cheerful and positive that we'll get out of COVID. Don't be frustrated. That is a wrong attitude. Be very focused that we will get out of this, but do not. First is take care of yourself, protect yourself. Okay. And take some responsibility, behave responsibly with mask, with distance, with a little bit of cleanliness and get vaccinated. Vaccination is going to save lives. Vaccination is here to save severe disease. Mm. So, dhariya mat, we'll be out of COVID, but don't mm. be complacent. Don't be rebellious. Don't be argumentative as we are all as Indians. We all, we, we need this little cooperation for you for the next year and we'll be out of the woods. You know, that last bit uh, on, the, on the dire need or an urgent need to have our antiviral a COVID drug in place. Okay, we, we, we do have very good drugs now. See, we are able to manage COVID better. When we started last year in March, we were groping in the dark and we were shooting bullets not knowing whether they will work or not. We were using okay. repurposed drugs. Now, in the by the time the third wave will happen, we'll have better drugs to handle COVID. So like you're saying in, that we know the virus well now? Much better. We are able to do better pattern records. We know what works and what does not work. And we know what are the red flags. We know when to intervene, when not to intervene. We have also learned that it's better sometimes not to intervene and supportive care does the job with a little bit of oxygen, prone position, a little bit of steroid. And the right drug at the right time is so crucial and critical. All right. And anything else? Your last word? No, I think stay safe and stay happy. See, remember one thing. One of the reasons people don't follow advice is because from internally they are not happy. So if you get that a little bit of happiness and a little bit of sacrifice for your own health and people around you, it will be very, very crucial to get out of these tough times. See, we are all in tough times. The world is in tough times and we want to live in a COVID-free world. And if we are in this Vasudev Kutumbam, where we really want to get out of us, this COVID-free world, we need each one of you to cooperate by masking and vaccinating. So the the uh, ensuring the mitigation of the so-called third wave impact is pretty much in your in our hands. In Absolutely. our hands, that is doable. That is a doable action. Absolutely, completely agree. 
on that note thank you so much uh, and for your assurance and instilling confidence in the viewers of national broadcaster dd news thank you very much dr shashank joshi renowned endocrinologist and maharashtra covid 19 task force member for joining us on the show thank you namaskar न्यूज नाइट के प्रायोजक हैं अमूल द टेस्ट ऑफ इंडिया और वंडर सीमेंट जब भी आए भला कर जाए नमस्कार न्यूज नाइट में आप सभी का स्वागत है कोविड टीकों को लेकर हिचकिचाहट खत्म करें भ्रम और अफवाहों से रहें दूर इस संदेश को प्रधानमंत्री ने मन की बात कार्यक्रम में देश के दूर दराज में रह रहे लोगों से खुद बात कर लोगों में भ्रम को दूर करने का प्रयास किया और टीका लगवाने की अपील की न्यूज नाइट में हम टीके को लेकर हिचकिचाहट को दूर करने के लिए हो रहे प्रयासों और डॉक्टरों के सुझाव आप तक लेकर आए हैं साथ ही देश दुनिया की अन्य बड़ी खबरें भी होंगी लेकिन शुरुआत अभी तक की सुर्खियों के साथ मैं हूँ ऋतु वर्मा 